Okay, first of all, can you give me a brief synopsis of what the study was about, the 10 year study? I did a study of the heterosexual transmission of HIV in California, and we recruited individuals who were infected with HIV, then we recruited their sexual partners, and we looked at whether transmission, in fact, had occurred, and then we tried to identify those factors that increase the likelihood that transmission would, in fact, occur, because just because you're having uh, contact with a partner and if you're infected with HIV does not necessarily mean you'll transmit the virus. Okay, now over the course of the 10, uh, I believe it was 10 years, Yeah. Correct? Um, there was no transmission from male to female, from male to male. What was the purpose, what was the reasoning for that? That there was no transmission over time is actually not surprising for a variety of reasons. The first and probably most important is that the study really was a behavioral intervention. So we were very heavily counseling these people to protect themselves because we knew there was a risk for transmission. Um, so that's reason number one. The other reason is um, oftentimes in epidemiological studies you have what's known as a cohort effect and that is that um, we, we, if there are individual variations in susceptibility, the couples that we see where transmission has not occurred are potentially not, I mean, we don't have hard evidence about that, but potentially are those couples where for immunologic reasons or biologic reasons, transmission is less likely to occur. So in other words, where transmission is likely to occur, it happens early on, and then you tend to follow those couples where it, a transmission event would be more difficult. It's what's called a cohort effect. So you see fewer of the events, you see fewer um, new cases of disease over time because people who tend to get it may maybe already have it. Again, the behavioral intervention is the larger reason. So in most of the studies of heterosexual transmission that have looked at discordant couples, which we did, they tend to see far more of their transmission events at entry into the study and far fewer over time. Now, when you say entry, is that prior to the study beginning when they're enrolled or after the study? Some the people, I mean, I, I don't remember the figures offhand, but at entry into the study, there definitely were a significant proportion of couples where their partner did not know that they were infected or not. Some did, but mo I, I can't even tell you what the breakdown was. So it's hard for me to know what you mean by the beginning of the study or entry into the study. For many couples, the point of, at the point of entry into the study, it was when they found out that transmission had occurred. Okay. Does that help? Oh, that's, that's, okay. that's Now, how did, um, once again, like, I, I, I'm just trying to, sure. I'm not a, a mathematician. Yeah. How did they get to the zero point? Well, there I did work with a mathematician, and really, he, there's statistical modeling involved. The truth is, if you really want to get down to how that figure was calculated, in all honesty, you have to talk to him. He's my co-author on that, called Steve Shabosky. He did all of the statistical work. Okay, okay. Because at one point it says, while well, lack of transmission in our perspective study there was, we didn't see transmission. The transmission events we saw were at entry into the study.